Hi everybody, here is a video on solving equations involving radicals. There are three different types of equations that you're going to be learning about in this video and we will practice them all in class. And they all, every equation involves radicals. Either the equation starts out with a radical or you use a radical to solve it. So let's start with the first type which is the one that you're going to be most familiar with and that is going to be if there is an integer exponent. And remember an integer exponent that would be like a whole number exponent. And the method to solve this is you're going to always isolate the term that has the exponent in it, and then you have to undo that exponent by using the nth root. That's where the radical comes into play. And you're going to check for how many solutions you have, because remember, you could have um, zero solutions, one solution, or two solutions, depending on if it's even or odd index. So let's start with an example here. And let's do 1 third x minus 12 cubed equals 125. So pause the video and get these few notes jotted down so then you can keep up with me whenever I do this example out. Now, my integer expression is already, I'm sorry, my exponent term is this right here and it's already isolated. So we can go right to the next step, which says undo the exponent of n with the nth root. So since this is to the cube root, I have no chance of getting x alone as long as this exponent of 3 is there. The 3 needs to go away, and the only thing that will undo the exponent of 3 is cube rooting it. So I'm going to cube root each side. Cube root, cubed cancel. So now I have 1 third x minus 12. Now cube root of 125, that only has one answer because it's an odd index of 3. The only answer I could get is 5. And then it's just a basic equation from here. So you add 12 and you get 17. I'm going to multiply by 3 and x is 51. Now keep in mind that you could also do the following. So I had 1 third x minus 12 to the third. Uh, it's really doing the same exact thing, but if you want to think of it a different way, instead of cube rooting it, you could say, oh, I'm going to raise this to the 1 third power which is the exact same thing as cube rooting it, but a slightly different notation. And then 3 times 1 third is 1, which cancels, leaving you with just this, which we had right there. So just um, different ways of approaching it, but really it's doing the same exact thing. Let's try this one here. I like this example because it's going to make us think about solutions here. So 7 plus 1 fourth x to the fourth is 256. Once again, my... Um, exponent term is already alone, so I don't have to do any beginning work here. I'm just going to undo my exponent of 4 by taking the fourth root. So 4 through each side. Now as soon as you have an even root, you need to immediately think, I'm going to have two solutions here. So 7 plus 1 fourth x. Now the fourth root of 256 is 4, but it's also negative 4. So when I solve this equation, we're kind of solving two equations here. We're going to solve um, 7 plus 1 fourth x equal, equaling 4 and 7 plus 1 fourth x equaling negative 4. And you're going to do the same basic equation steps as before. It's just um, you're going to get two solutions. What I did here is I just solved each of these. So when I did the first one, I subtracted 7. I got negative 3. I multiplied by 4. I got negative 12. Here is one of my solutions. For the next equation, I subtracted 7 again, giving me negative 11. I multiplied by 4 again, giving me negative 44. So there are two possible solutions here. Let's do one more example. And I'm going to write this one out. It's a little bit more involved than the other one. There's just a couple more preliminary steps you're going to have to do here. But then it's the same exact thing. All right, so my exponent term is not completely alone yet. So we need to do the basic steps to get it alone first. So start by subtracting 4, so 1 half x plus 5 to the 8th times 3 is 267. And then we're going to divide by 3. Bam, that's gone. I still need the parentheses because this whole thing is to the 8th power. And I'm going to get 89 here. At this point, I'm picking up where all the other equations started because my exponent term is alone now. To undo an exponent of 8, I'm going to do the 8th root. And remember, we learned in class how to do these. I'm going to do 8, and then I'm going to do nth root, and then I'm going to do nth root of 89. All right, 
right, now you have to think, I just did an even root here. So that means your calculator is always going to give you the primary root, which is a positive one, but you need to realize there are actually two answers. So plus and minus 1.753. So 1 half x plus 5 is plus or minus 1.753. And then at this point, you have two equations to solve again. When I did it, this time I organized it a little bit differently. Instead of putting them one on top of the other like I did here, I put them side to side here. It really doesn't matter how you organize it as long as you do out both solutions. And after doing the basic adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, I get these two as my final answers. So let's try the next type. This is if there is a rational exponent in the equation. That would mean that instead of having a whole number exponent, I'm going to have a fractional exponent. Same Basic steps is before you're still isolating the exponent term, we're still undoing an exponent, but instead of undoing the exponent with a radical, we're going to undo an exponent with an exponent, and it's going to be the reciprocal. And once again, we have to check for how many solutions we're going to have. So let's start with this very basic idea here, which is if I have x to the 2 thirds equaling 16, and I want just x alone, I'm going to need to get rid of my exponent, which is 2 thirds. You want to think, okay, what do I multiply by in order to just get x to the first power, which would just be x. And it is 3 halves, which is why whatever your exponent is, you're going to use the, um, just the reciprocal because that will cancel to be 1. So that means I'm going to raise 16 to the 3 halves. So now you have to think, okay, 16 to the 3 halves, that's the square root of 16 cubed. Now, you need to remember the square root of 16 has two answers. It's plus and minus 4. Still cubed. Now, positive 4 cubed, 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. Negative 4 cubed is negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4, which is negative 64. So this one actually has two answers, plus or minus 64. But this is the general idea of what's going to be going on. Make sure you have the basic steps written down. We're going to do another example here. I'm going to move the screen down. So let's do one that actually has some steps involved in it. And let's do negative 6 minus 1 fourth x to the 5 thirds equals 32. My exponent term is already isolated. So it's not like I have to do any adding or subtracting at the beginning. I can go right to the point where I want to get rid of the 5 thirds. Because remember, to get x alone, as long as the parentheses are there, you can't get it alone. And the only thing to get rid of the parentheses is to get rid of my exponent. And to get rid of 5 thirds, let's raise it to the 3 fifths. So that will be canceled, and I'm just left with what's inside. So now I have to think. If I have 32 to the 3 fifths, that is the fifth root of 32 cubed. And the fifth root of 32 is 2. And 2 cubed is 8. So that's how I get 8 here. There's only one answer because a fifth root only has one answer. And one answer cubed is one answer. So that one I don't really have to think too much about possible solutions. I add 6. I get 14, and I multiply by negative 4, and x is negative 56. Let's try one more like that, and then we'll get to the third type. So let's do this example here. In this one, my exponent term is not alone, so I'm going to have to get rid of the 11 and the 2. So let's quickly move everything over. And subtracting 11, that gives me 5, 12. And let's divide by 2. So that will keep my exponent term alone. 5, 12 divided by 2 is 256. Okay, at this term, I'm gonna get this time I'm gonna get rid of my fractional exponent. Let's raise it to the 3 fourths. Raise it to the 3 fourths. So 256 to the 3 fourths. Let's see what that's gonna be. That would be the fourth root. So I'm immediately thinking two answers of 256 cubed. The fourth root of 256 is plus or minus 4. And I'm going to cube each of those. So that means I am on my way to getting two different solutions here. So I'm going to have 3x plus 7 equaling 4 cubed is 64. 
But I could also have 3x plus 7 equaling negative 4 cubed. Negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4, negative 64. So for these, I just finished out the basic solving. You don't need to watch me do that. I just subtract and divide, and I get my final answers. Okay, last type. This is an equation that starts with a radical expression in the equation. And here we're going to be introduced to an idea called an extraneous solution. You might have heard this term before. I'm not sure. If you haven't, it's not a big deal because we're going to do um, a whole in-class graphing calculator lab on them. But similar idea, you isolate the expression first, the radical expression. We have to undo an nth root by using the nth power, and then we'll check for solutions, and then we'll be done. So let's try this example here. Cube root of 0.7x plus 3 minus 6 equals 1. So my radical expression is not alone, so I'm just going to quickly add 6 to each side giving me 7. So to undo a cube root, I am going to cube it. Whatever the nth root is, you use the nth power. Because remember, cube root is really the same as this raised to the 1 third, and then cubing that would cancel it. So I'm going to raise 7 to the third power, and then I have 0.7x. The radical is gone. The cube root was canceled with the 3. Now I have 7 to the third, which is 343. That's a pretty common one to know. You'll do that a lot and you'll have it memorized. I get 340. And then you just divide by 0.7, which I did ahead of time, and you end up with 480, whoa, 485, 0.714. We're going to do an example that has an extraneous solution after another quick one. Um, basically, an extraneous solution is an, a solution that when you plug it in, the solution gives a false statement. It does not work. So you should always check your answers by plugging them back in and seeing if you get a true statement. I'm going to set up one more example, and then we're going to try another one. So if I had like 8 times the sixth root of x minus 8 plus 2 equals 79, to get your expression alone that has a radical, I'm going to have to do some basic steps. Here I've subtracted 2 and divided by 8 giving me this right here. So now my radical expression is alone. I'm going to undo the sixth root by raising to the sixth power. So now I have x minus 8, and that number raised to the sixth power is 7950680.28. And then I can just add 8 to each side and get my final answer. So here we go. That's the final one. Now let's try a more involved one where you have to think a little bit here. A little, or think a little bit more than we've been doing with our solutions. We're going to have the square root of x minus 12 equals 2 minus the square root of x. Now some people think that they can do this. They can undo a radical, a square root, by squaring. And then they say, oh, that cancels. And 2 squared is 4, and square root of x squared is x. But we can't do that. You cannot apply a square root to two things added or subtracted. Only if the two things are multiplied or divided. So we are still going to square each side, and that will completely eliminate that radical, giving me x minus 12. But I'm going to have to distribute or foil here. The radical isn't going to go just clean away. So I have x minus 12. Now careful with your foiling here. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times negative root x is negative 2 root x. Negative root x times 2 is negative 2 root x. Negative root x times negative root x is positive x. So you might be thinking, I don't know if that made it much simpler, but it did. Just wait. Negative 2 root x minus 2 root x is negative 4 root x plus x. Let's combine our like terms here, which I highlighted. If I subtract x from each side, notice that they fully cancel here. So now I have negative 12 equals 4 minus 4 root x. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the numbers together. So I'm going to subtract 4, giving me negative 16 is negative 4 root x. Let's divide by negative 4. And I get 4 equals root x. And the very last thing, if I have root x, but I really want just x, I'm going to square each side. And my last answer is 16. 
But if you plug this back in, you do not get a true statement.